Arthur C. Clarke has a famous quote that reads, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Game Master's here, and technology in Dungeons & Dragons, it's not a foreign concept, but it is a rare concept. Of course, the game itself is based in fantasy with magic at its core, but every now and again a bit of technological magic is introduced. Today, we are taking a look at the new magic items and technology found in the new D&D book, Quests from the Infinite Staircase. Do keep in mind, however, that we will dip into some some spoiler territory. Quest from the Infinite Staircase is an anthology of adventures that updates six old-school advanced Dungeons & Dragons modules into 5th edition adventures. Some of these existed in a similar form back in the 80s, uh, the, the magic items that we're going to go over, and their counterparts were there. But today we're going to focus on how they appear and act in this new 5th edition Quests book, but we'll also reference the original material in just a little. Let's jump on in and check out the new magic items. A moment ago I mentioned that we'd be dipping into spoiler territory. Now, this is where we dip our feet in. The first item we want to look at is called the Staff of Ruling, and it is found in the adventure Pharaoh. The Staff of Ruling can function as a simple staff, causing 1d6 bludgeoning damage. It is approximately 4 to 5 feet in length and has a carved serpent coiling around it. You can use an action to produce one of the staff's effects, uh, Orb of Lightning, Staff to Snake, or Thunderclap. Orb of Lightning can cause a small ball of lightning to appear within 60 feet of you. Creatures that come into its space will cause the orb to detonate, causing between 66 and 10d6 lightning damage. Staff to Snake is exactly what it sounds like. You can toss the staff onto the ground, and it becomes a large poisonous snake under your control. It takes on the giant poisonous snake stat block until either you speak the command word to turn it back into a staff, or its hit points are reduced to zero. Thunderclap also does what it sounds like. You can hold the staff skyward and produce a loud booming thunderclap. Creatures in a 30 foot area of you must succeed on a DC 15 constitution check, otherwise they are deafened and frightened. Once you have used any of the three effects, you cannot use the same effect again until the following dawn when it recharges. The next two items come from the Lost Caverns of Sajkanth. We're getting waist deep into spoilers now. Dowd's Wondrous Lanthorn, a Lantern and a Heretic, a Longsword, can be found in the latter part of the adventure when you faced Drelnsta, Tasha's daughter. Yeah, that, that, that Tasha. Dowd's Wondrous Lanthorn is an artifact that must be attuned to in order to use. It is described as being wrought from the finest yellow gold. It has four faces and an unwavering amber flame burns within. Each face of the lantern is fitted with faceted gemstone lenses. Initially when found, it is diamond, emerald, ruby, and sapphire. But you can use an action to swap any of those lenses out for other gem lenses. Based on the type of lens that is installed, the lantern can cast different spells, which I'll show you in just a moment. Because this is an artifact, the Dungeon Master has some choices to make as this comes with two minor beneficial properties, one major beneficial property, and one minor detrimental property, so choose wisely. Diodes Lanthorn can be used to shed bright light in a 60-foot radius. It is unclear if the light emitted takes on the hue of the lens that is installed, but invisible creatures that are caught in this light are no longer concealed. As mentioned, there are four facings on this lantern, but you can change them out um, with each face Facing. Depending on the type of gemmed facet you have installed, you can cast a different spell. But each spell's casting also consumes fuel from within the lantern, a different amount based on the spell being cast. The lantern uses crushed gemstones as fuel and can hold 10,000 gold worth of powered, powdered gems, and it burns about 100 gold worth of powdered gems per year. Should you have the amethyst lens in, you can cast Refers Gravity, but it's going to consume 3,000 gold worth of fuel. The diamond lens can cast a Disintegrate and consumes 2,000 gold worth of fuel. The emerald lens can cast Haste and it eats up only 500 gold of fuel. The jacinth lens can cast Flame Strike and burns through 1,000 gold worth of crushed gems. The ruby lens can cast Hold Monster and also burns through 1,000 gold worth of crushed powdered gems. The Sapphire Lens lets you cast Fear and burns off 500 gold worth of fuel. The Topaz Lens lets you cast Slow and also consumes 500 gold worth of fuel. 
You can also combine all four lenses, regardless of what lens is installed, to cast Prismatic Wall, and this will consume 5,000 gold worth of crushed gems fuel. Again, remember it can only hold 10,000 gold worth of crushed gems as fuel, and should the lantern not be fed fuel, or should the Amper Flame otherwise be extinguished, the individual that it's attuned to immediately dies. Heretic is a legendary longsword that Drelzna uses. It was created by a cult to steal power from good aligned gods. It grants plus three bonus to attack and damage rolls. It can do 1d8 slashing damage, or if you're wielding it two-handed, it can dish out 1d10 slashing damage. It has a total of six charges that can be used to perform either Destroy Devotion or Faith Hunter. Destroy Devotion lets you expend one charge when you hit a creature, and it must succeed a DC 17 constitution save, otherwise it's paralyzed. Should this hit a Celestial, that Celestial will have disadvantage to its save roll. Faith Hunter lets you spend one or more of its charges to cast these spells. Detect Evil and Good, and this is going to cost you one charge. Fly, this will cost you two charges. Or True Sing, that's going to cost you three charges. Heretic is a chaotic evil sentient weapon that has an intelligence of 17, a wisdom of 17, and a charisma of 15. It has dark vision out to 120 feet, and it can speak, read, and understand common and giant. But two, once someone attunes to it, it can also understand all of that person's languages as well. As mentioned, Heretic wants to destroy good aligned gods as well as those that would support those gods. This is not a sword for the good guys, and it will go into a frenzied need for violence when it encounters priests and pious folk folks. In the original Lost Caverns of Sajkant, there was another item found called the Demon Omnicon of Igwilv. I'm trying to say that three times fast. And while it's not specifically found in this updated version of the adventure, it is mentioned, and it suggests that you can check it out in detail from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. It too is an artifact, and it really could easily fit well into this adventure, so I do recommend checking it out from Tasha's book. Going back to the quote at the beginning of this video, where advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, well, now it's time to jump into the technology. The remaining items that we are going to look at are going to be found in Expedition to the Barrier Peaks. This specific adventure takes place in Greyhawk, and for the most part, on board a spaceship. So naturally, we're going to find some fun goodies to play with. First on our list is the Concussion Grenade and Sleep Grenade. You can toss one of these puppies up to 60 feet away, or if you happen to run across a grenade launcher, you can shoot one up to 120 feet away. The Concussion Grenade would need to see each creature in a 20-foot area make a DC 15 dexterity save. Otherwise, they're going to take 6d6 force damage. The Sleep Grenade would cover the same area, a 20-foot area, and you'd need to make a DC 15 constitution save. Otherwise, Otherwise, you are knocked unconscious for one hour. Of course, if you take damage or someone shakes you, 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 you wake up. The remaining items each require an energy cell, which outside of this adventure might be uh, a little difficult to come by, but to power these, an energy cell is needed. There is an anti-gravity belt, which has a small, uh, well, several small metal tubes pointing down from the belt itself. As mentioned, it is powered by an energy cell, and, fully, and a fully charged energy cell gives this belt 10 total uses, uh, or charges. You can activate the belt by spending any number of charges, up to 10, and the belt remains active for that many minutes. So spend one charge, it's active for one minute. Spend five charges, it's active for five minutes. While active, you can rise or descend vertically up to 20 feet. Otherwise, you simply float in place. You can move horizontally by pushing yourself off of a wall or by being pulled along. For example, if, if someone has a rope tied to you, uh, just be careful because once that time is up, you're going to fall. There is the Needler Pistol and the Paralysis Pistol. The Needler Pistol is also powered by an energy cell and can, uh, and a full cell gives it 10 total charges. You can spend one charge to fire a burst of glowing needle-like darts in a 15-foot cone. Each creature in that 15-foot cone needs to make a DC 15 dexterity save, otherwise they're going to take 8d4 piercing damage. The Paralysis Pistol works exactly the same. Spend a charge and it fires. This one shoots a ray of crackling energy at a creature within 60 feet, and it must succeed a DC 15 constitution save, otherwise, you guessed it, it's paralyzed for one minute. You may also run across some power armor. It too is 
is charged with a power cell, and a fully charged one gives the power armor 24 total charges. You can spend any number of charges to activate the armor, and it remains active for one hour per charge. You can use it to augment physicality. This gives you advantage on strength checks, and your carrying capacity is doubled. Or you can activate the armor's environmental adaptation, which makes it airtight, but it also provides its own atmosphere, allowing you to breathe normally in any environment and withstand extreme temperatures. Plus, harmful gases and, and things like uh, inhaled poisons, this protects from that too. Or you can activate its force field. You use your reaction to spend a charge, then you roll 3d10 and reduce the amount of damage taken by that roll. Or you can spend a charge to activate the armor's propulsion, which gives you the ability to fly for one minute. Like the anti-gravity belt though, if you're in the air when that one minute ends, you're going to fall. Should you just wear this armor without anything active, or should the power cell run dry, it's going to act and provide protection as if it were a suit of plate armor. Robots, or as this refers to them, constructs, also roam the halls of the spaceship, and you're pretty much guaranteed to run across some as you explore. Finding a robot controller will be a major boon for your characters, as it will allow you to spend a charge. Uh, oh, and a, a fully charged energy cell gives the controller uh, three total charges. But you can spend one to either control a construct or disrupt it. Controlling one... Uh, of your choice requires one charge, and a construct within 60 feet is considered charmed for one minute if it fails a DC 15 wisdom check. It will obey verbal commands and you can communicate with it via the controller. Should you run across a construct that is doing something you don't want it to do, you can spend a charge to disrupt its actions. Should it fail a DC 15 wisdom save, it is incapacitated for one minute. While there are other plenty of other magic items found spread throughout these updated adventures, the ones that we've looked at here are feature are the, the featured ones found in the appendix section of the book. Again, there are others that are in here that are found in other 5th edition books. For example, there's also a smoke grenade, uh, a laser rifle, laser pistol, uh, even a can of uh, Keog Tom's ointment. Those can all be found in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Other adventures include things like uh, a wand of magic detection, um, a potion of heroism, a ring of protection. Uh, the list kind of goes on and on. I want to thank everyone for watching today's video. If you found it fun or entertaining, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing as that really helps the channel to grow. My name is Brian and I've been playing and running role-playing games since the 80s and today I found it super fun exploring what each magic item and piece of tech does and the idea to do this came from some suggestions over in my Discord. I encourage everyone watching to jump in there. We get to some fun and lively discussions and if you'd like to help shape the future of this channel, the Game Master's Discord is the place to be and I'll leave a link to it down in the description. I also want to thank these mighty fine channel supporters as their contributions to the channel have made it so that I didn't need to take on a, a sponsored ad for today's video. Over on Patreon, I make fun adventuring goodies for my contributing patrons. Stuff like fixing uh, the, the Vecna Eve of Ruin Adventure, party trackers, an endless dungeon, and I've got more fun things in the works, so be sure to check that out too. Magic Items to Futuristic Technology. Quest from the Infinite Staircase offers up fun goodies for characters characters to run across, given some may not work outside of the respective adventure that they appear in, or may break an otherwise homebrew campaign. But what we've looked at, well, if you want to include them in your game and you feel that they're too powerful, like in the instance of the technology-based items, you can always limit the number of energy cells that players will find. Likewise, if they are something you'd like to use, see uh, more of and make more use of, you can always have your players discover a way to either recharge the depleted cells or simply find more cells. Which of these what that we went over was your favorite item. Let me know down in the comments and until next our paths cross, may you not get fussed at too much by heretic.